Welcome to the Building Materials Sales and Marketing Podcast, presented by Mark Mitchell, a sales and marketing consultant who specializes in helping building materials companies overcome difficult sales problems. Mark is the author of the book, Building Materials Channel Marketing, and a frequent speaker at industry events. Hello, this is Mark Mitchell from Wizard Strategy. Glad you could join us again today. The subject that we're going to talk again, we, we talked uh, a few weeks ago about, but I wanted to delve further into it. And that is the subject of people say the last mile uh, delivery, how you get that your building material product to where it needs to be. And uh, we, we talked about, you know, how that's becoming more of a competitive advantage for people like distributors and dealers in the building materials industry. One of the things that's hit me is I'm always looking for things that are not on people's radar screens. What's something they're just not thinking about? And in the case of distributors and dealers in building materials, the ones that offer a delivery, they kind of assume, well, that's just a cost of doing business. We have to offer delivery. It's not our core competency, but we have to, and, and we do a pretty good job. Maybe you even think you're doing a great job, but we do a pretty good job. So what happens is I think every year when people sit down to do their budgets and try to plan the future of their business, they think about, maybe they think about transitioning to online sales, improving their website, uh, what lines they carry. But I, th I don't see them every year going, you know, this delivery, you know, should we rethink this? Should we redo it? So today I have back a, a very special guest, Mr. Chris Jarvis from go for delivers And uh, Chris really understands this area of logistics. And uh, I wanted to delve further in with Chris about the concept of what does it really cost you to operate your own, whether a uh, delivery fleet, whether that's one truck or 60, what are the, the real costs to do that? And go for and Chris have had a lot of success in helping building material dealers and distributors in Canada to improve their, lower their cost and improve their customer experience by outsourcing their deliveries. And now they're uh, really uh, coming into the United States. And so I thought this would be a, a good subject to share with all of you that you're probably at more likely a manufacturer than you are a distributor or dealer, but it may be a good subject for you to talk to your distributors and, and dealers about in order to help them become more successful. So Chris, welcome again to the show. Thanks, Mark. Great to see you. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. Uh, I am this time also prepared here see, uh, for, oh. for our call. Better, better prepared. I, I, got, I finally embarrassed somebody in the marketing department enough that, that JP sent me my own go for swag here. I got a hat, got a nice shirt. I probably should have worn today, but I got the hat. We'll, 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 we'll stick with that. So I, I like it. I'm so it. happy to see that. Looks great on you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Chris, what in your experience, what are the things that, you know, when you you look at if you were a dealer or a distributor, what comes to mind are of all the costs that, that really go into uh, operating your own delivery service? Yeah, it's a great, great question. And it can be, you know, fairly complex, right, Mark, to try to think about, you know, all of the elements that go into successfully carrying your fleet. But when I when I hear that question, the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, some of the missed opportunities of carrying your fleet. So, you know, like any asset, right? I think for me, it starts with how many should you have? And then it drives into the cost. But, you know, inevitably, you never seem to always have the right number. You have too many, you have too few. You're letting customers down yeah. or, you're or you're wasting money. But when we think about fleets and the fleet cost, I mean, we've got all the basic elements of, you know, leasing vehicles, putting gas in them, maintenance, insurance. The biggest one is labor. Uh, labor will account for about half of the cost. And so wow. you've got to consider all of that. Then you have to also consider, you know, even some of the less hard costs. Where do I park it? Where do I store it? Do I have the property to put that on if I'm in a more rural area? As we move towards EV and EV trucks in particular, where do I charge it? And, and really that whole operational solution, the whole operational part of the business. What is your business? What are the selling hours? Is it weekends? Is it nights? How many hours per day am I utilizing this truck? 
all comes into how much is it going to cost? How much mileage am I putting on it? How many drivers do I have to have? So if I'm, if I'm operating seven days a week, I'm obviously going to need more than one driver to cover all the days. And then how long am I running it for a day? will all come into, you know, a cost calculation that we're going to want to, we're going to want to look at very, um, very closely and understand what is the value, right? How much can I get out of it? Right. What can't I get out of it? There's only one appointment. If I have one truck, there's only one appointment for every hour of that I'm, I'm servicing it. And if I have two, when do I need to? And so starting to understand our seasonality, our customer demand patterns, um, and what kind of service do they really require? You know, so vehicles, as you would expect, cars to flatbeds or boom trucks or even bigger, all have very different cost calculations associated with them. The cost per kilometer, the cost per mile is very different as you go from small vehicles to large vehicles. And maintenance, I would think too, like the you know, maintenance if you've got a boom truck, now you've got hydraulics and things to worry about in addition to tires and uh, and oil changes and, and so forth. Absolutely. You got a Moffitt, it's got rubber tires as well. They wear out, it's got to be greased, it's got to be uh, PM'd. All of these small things that, you know, eventually add up to be you know, quite, quite a little bit of a complex undertaking. Um, it sounds simple enough to have a truck, but uh, to really understand why and where today, you know, most people that we're talking to end up asking themselves, well, should I have the fleet? You know, does the fleet make good sense for my organization when it may not be my core aspect of my business, right? I've got customers to take care of. I've got shelves to stock. I've got products to look at. I've got assortments to decide on. I've got next season coming. We're moving from spring to winter. You know, we're bringing in the, the, the new line. I'm cutting POs. I'm making purchase orders. Is a fleet another one of those questions and, and tasks that you really want to put focus on? Um, customers today, they want their product and they want it now. Um, they don't like waiting. They expect things to happen quite quickly. Am I going to be, when I'm all done deciding how much it costs, am I going to, Am I going to be able to satisfy that uh, as a best in class solution, you know, um, or am I really just trying to get it done? Chris, with your experience in, you know, you have a lot of experience in logistics and coming from the, the retail world and how seeing that that's transformed and faster, we'll say, than the building materials industry. If I were to just want to get your opinion of this, but if I were to look and say, if the, the total cost to operate my fleet is $100,000, okay, just picking a, a number that's probably a very small fleet, but we'll just say $100,000. Uh, and that is made up of, we'll say, uh, so that would say to me, it's $50,000 for the vehicle, the insurance, maintenance, and so forth, and, and $50,000 for the labor. The other cost that I'm wondering, you know, this is probably just a your opinion, but you know, what does it cost to the time that you're not an uh, expert or I'm sorry, a lumber dealer or, or building material distributor is not an expert in logistics. They're an expert in what they're an expert in, you know, in, in understanding right. what building materials to have in, in stock when and to meet their customers needs. And so I'm just wondering, you know, in my mind, wow, the, the cost it would seem like of having their personnel to you know, have to negotiate a new truck and and find and hire and train a driver and negotiate insurance and 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 deal with accident claims or just all of these things. I'm like, wow, what, you know, what's that cost? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, I think you know, to, to run to run a vehicle, more than half the cost is in labor. Uh, Fifty to sixty percent of that equation will be labor at the end of the year. So if we do a hundred thousand dollars spend in a transportation solution, we know that fifty to sixty thousand dollars will be will be labor, and then the rest is vehicle maintenance, gas, insurance, etc. But to your point, there's even a third bucket. You know, all the things that you don't see, the scheduling. Oh, you're sick today. Now what? Some of the aspects that that, that you were rhyming off from behind the scenes. You have a claim. Now what? The vehicle goes in for service. It needs two days worth of work. It's not available. Now, what do we tell people? Well, we better get a backup. And so for every situation, there becomes another layer of, of more complexity. It sounds from the outs on the onset, well, it's simple enough. I get a truck and I put a driver in it and we offer delivery until, well, he has that driver has vacation. 
the driver called in sick, the vehicle has to go for scheduled maintenance, the vehicle's had an accident, the, and now there's all these you know, exceptions in the way, and they take administration and management time to deal with, contend with, to go pick up the truck, to do the cover off of vacations. And now you've got another, another aspect of your business that requires your time and attention. And you have to really weigh that up against, is that the best possible way for us to spend our time? Given that the world is so hyper-competitive, right? And there's so much at stake of getting it right, selecting the right products, you know, working with customers in the store, yes. uh, fulfilling, fulfilling orders in the yard, um, assembling orders, and all of this high degree of customer expectation around specific timing and commitments. And that's pretty big. It's a pretty big ask. And then you layer on, well, the delivery. And I would offer up, it's a truck and it's a person. Yes. But in my, the world that go for works in, it goes beyond that. You know, the experience is how easily and readily can you get an order into our system? In most cases, it's seamless. It's, it's integrated. It just, you know, from the POS, from your... yes. From your systems, we pick up the order. But then it goes beyond that for experience. You put the order in, the customer knows. We signal the customer we're coming. We tell them when to expect us. They get to tell us how we did when we're done. And then we get to know and realize what that customer relationship really needs to start to look like. You know, we got special notes. When you come to the site, do this. Look look for this person. Don't do that. And then, then you rate us. Yes, you did very good here, here. And we really like your Joe, dri- Joe the driver. But over time, we get to know those small, unique details. And our drivers get to know them. Yes. And then all of a sudden, the experience is a high degree of visibility, a high degree of reporting and transparency, and a better overall result, I would, I would argue, than, than a driver in a truck um, who, yes, has great utility. And I'm sure you know, serves most, most days, most times. But when you aggregate everything like we do, and you start looking at it through high degree of technology and digitization, allowing us to see trends and predict things and get to know very complex situations, the value is more than just the truck and the driver, right? The value is everybody has their smartphone. Um, They see us coming. um, We can leave them notes. They can leave us notes. And I think that's, that's kind of the third, the third aspect of this is the you know, what's in the market today that supports uh, best in class delivery um, has a lot of technology uh, behind the scenes. And so I think even beyond buying the truck, there's those things. Yeah. So there's the cost of the truck or the vehicle and vehicles. Then when we say labor, you know, I was thinking the the, the driver, but then there's the other aspect of, of managing the whole thing and taking, to me, literally taking your eye off the ball of what you're best at. More and more, you know, we're looking at in our life, what things do we outsource today because it just makes more sense, whether in our personal life or in uh, our, our business life, that we just... Uh, yeah you know, are, are more attuned to that. And, and it seems to be, uh, you know, working well. Now, you have uh, had a lot of success uh, with some uh, major building material dealers and distributors in, uh, in Canada. What types of things are you hearing back from them about why this, uh, you know, has made sense for them? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think from our customer standpoint, the biggest one has to be an infinite supply. Right. And it sounds a little, you know, infinite's a big word, but the reality is when you deal with go for and an on-demand logistics solution that, that what we have, it's it really is an endless amount of vehicles we can bring you. So to be able to call on a service that if you need two trucks today, you have two trucks. If you need 22 trucks today, then you have two trucks. And anything in between. We work really quickly and we do hours within as little as two hours. And I think as a result, we're able to bring owner operators to your business um, that can meet exactly the kinds of demands of your business on that day. We know every day and every season it changes, but I would think, you know, the number one benefit that our customers tell us is that flexibility, the flexibility. Yes. No worries. It just happened. Okay. It just happened. Right. So it's like all of a sudden their biggest comment seemed to be something around the fact I always had to worry about this asset and this cost, and I don't ever need to worry about it 
But what comes out in their discussion is it's even better than that. It's so flexible. Yes. So I have six vehicles and some days I need 10 and some days I need four. And it was always a worry, right? Am I going to be, are my drivers going to be sitting in the parking lot? Or are my drivers going to be working 12 hours and not be happy with their, you know, with their personal lives and all that goes with it? All of a sudden, I just, this infinite flexibility is real benefit. It allows people to your point, not take their eye off the ball. Yeah. The the other one to me, Chris, is the cost of, I'm going to say, potential cost of lost sales and lost business. When Mm -hmm. uh, now more and more relate our personal experiences with our business experiences. As we've been living at home with COVID, more and more of us are, you know, Amazon sales are going through the roof. And rather than being bogged down, they seem to just keep rising to the occasion. I need some new inkjet cartridges. I would like to support my local retailer on one hand. That means get in my car, drive over there. You know, they're they're likely to have them. Not really worried about that. But I have to, you know, literally spend, by the time it's all done, probably an hour to go pick up some cartridges. And, and I go on Amazon and they literally say, um, you know, if you order in the next hour, they'll be there in two hours, like you said. And it's like, okay, so my expectation just totally changed about what is possible. Mm-hmm. And so if you're a building material dealer or distributor, and you've got a you've got a customer, a contractor, builder, uh, whatever type of professional customer, or even do-it-yourself customer, and they're experiencing, uh, let's say, that increasing level of of uh, delivery expectation from Amazon and others, and now they're going to be really looking for which building material dealer distributor starts to uh, keep up with that, and which one is staying in the past. And so I think there's a potential also for a risk of, um, you know, even if you said we're going to we're going to have shinier, newer trucks and we're going to buy five new ones and we're going to do all this. Right. You still are kind of to me in the long run fighting an uphill battle that you can never win. And so I, I think about the, the, the other cost is then the potential risk of losing customers to a uh, competitor who may be a recognized direct competitor today, the distributor down the street, or maybe all of a sudden you find somebody like Home Depot decides that they want to come after your pro sales and they offer two hour delivery or something. And it's not, well, let me see if Henry's going to be available. (laughs) Let me see if Henry can do that. No, it's like, we can just do The computer says we're going to do this. Okay. And so that's another big cost. I think that people need, uh, building material companies need to consider is that potential risk of lost business. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you, know, you know the difficult conversations, right? Okay, so where's your job site? Are you in these postal codes or these postal codes? Do you want it on it? Let me check the schedule. Yeah, we go there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, but next week we're full. So right. I, I can get to you. Right. You know that difficult conversation. And you're, yes. you're, you're, you're trying to help your customer, but you're limited. You're limited by your, your, your capability within the delivery network. And, and you're right. Big companies like Home Depot, you know, pro sales are happening within two hours, right? These things are, are yes. on demand. They are working with providers just like us. Home Depot is our biggest customer, by the way. So we're very proud of that. And yeah. today's booking of a delivery happens instantly. It happens at the point of sale. And we don't check calendars and we don't look up where you live and we don't have to price it with a complex matrix. It's every day, this is the price. If we do eight or 80, that's okay. We will bring the right assets to make that that service level commitment happen. So it's quite a departure, right? From where do you live? Are you on what routes? When do we go there? On what days? Versus you just need to look at your customer and say, yes, we can do that. And we offer a simple pricing structure and there's a, there's a guarantee and there's a commitment to a great experience. And if it's not, you know, if it's anything but that, the customer has an opportunity to tell you and us what worked and what didn't work. And it just keeps getting better. But I think at the end of the day, you know, you talked about Amazon and the, the speed and the convenience, right? At the end of the day, it's about providing your customers who are, you know, in a very complex job site with tradespeople and a lot of a lot of implications, a lot of 
negative implications that could be impacted if you don't get it right. The stakes are high. The stakes are high and we're having yes. to make concessions and builders are paying for that, right? They're, they're every day. If the delivery doesn't show, if the delivery shows too late, there's implications and they're, they're real. You know, those implications end up being where they, they are now starting to look and say, who is the most reliable delivery? Um, exactly. Not only the fastest, but the most reliable. You bring up a really important point there. And also, you, you know, when I first found out about this concept, I just kind of assumed, you know, it, it's a, a bunch of people with some cars and trucks. And I didn't realize the degree of specialization that you've gone into where, you know, you have boom trucks, you have drivers that are knowledgeable about job sites and so forth. And also having Home Depot you know, as a customer, you know, they are, uh, they're very demanding. They're not accepting of like, well, we're trying to work this stuff out. It, <laughs> it either works for them or you're gone, you know? So that also was a, gave me a lot of confidence in, uh, in what you're able to do. So are there any other uh, costs that we haven't talked about today, uh, Chris, that we should share? No, none that comes off the top of my head, but I, I think ultimately, you know, very quickly, our conversation went from cost to service success, right? And I think when we're yes. thinking about cost, we're, we're sometimes looking in the rear view mirror. And I think today's customer requires us to look forward, be progressive and be innovative. And, and, and to your point, you know, the competitive landscape is fierce. When you're a, when you're a builder on, on a job site, the implications and the stakes are high. Uh, I think it's critical that you, you know, align yourself with people that can provide the predictable service success that drives your business to the next level. And I think that's what we're here to do. And I know when our founder, Brad Rollo, you know, introduced this concept to, to this company, Go For, it was built on that, that implication, those negative side effects that happen as a result of not having material in a timely fashion. And that's been our premise since day one. It'll continue to be the backbone of our company. And yes. as Brad and I both like to say, it's about creating an 11 out of 10 customer experience. And 11 out of 10, nothing, nothing right. less. And because I think you have to know the industry and understand what's at, what's at stake for these guys. And when you're trusted to do what we do in today's world, you've talked a lot about Amazon a little bit earlier. It's a delivery first world. And we are being relied on between the merchant and the customer making that, making that success happen. It's a small part of the chain, but it's a critical part. And we take it really serious. And and I think, you know, so, so costs quickly get us to service uh, discussion. And I think costs can be very detailed and we can look at them, you know, through analysis paralysis. But at the end of the day, you got to decide really what is my core competency? How am I going to be world-class at it? And when should I get a partner to take me the rest of the way? I think for us to go for it. Yeah. Well, this has this been, uh, yeah, very helpful. And uh, my purpose once again was um, I'm always looking for things that are not on people's radar screens. They're not even thinking about it or considering it to at least go, hey, maybe we didn't know that was an option. Maybe we should consider this. We haven't been thinking about how important maybe this is, how maybe there's a more cost-effective way to do it. And you know, when I talk to companies, they're like, oh, well, we, you know, we're, we're, we're choosing, deciding on our new website for next year, or should we add another salesperson or some in-house salespeople or take on another line of products or, or switch from one supplier to another? You know, I don't hear on the list of things that maybe we should consider changing the concept of delivery. And that was really my whole purpose is just to get the people in the building materials industry to as they're thinking about updating their website, hiring another salesperson or an in, uh, setting up an in-house department or online sales, that they also should put like, you know, delivery in that, in that discussion we uh, think that so. they're looking at all the different <laughs> things. Well, I know you do, but I, but <laughs> I also great think idea. too. And, and each company has to decide if it's right for them or not. But I just think that they, you know, didn't realize that that they could do this. You know, so I encourage uh, anyone who's interested to go to gofordelivers.com website and just learn more about it. And uh, if you're a dealer or distributor, it's it's something that I highly recommend you you put on your radar screen of looking into. And uh, if you are a manufacturer that sells to these people, you know, this is something that that you might be able to introduce them 
to that that might be right for them, or it may be something that they're not ready today. But at least they know like this is this is an option. We could do this, or we could look into this. That would you know Absolutely. make them, I believe, more successful by enable them to focus their management on what their core competency is, and also you know doing a better job with their customer experience. Chris, I really appreciate you being on. This has been uh, very helpful. I've always enjoyed our conversations and I like learning from people that really understand a particular subject. And I, you know, I'm certainly not an expert in uh, logistics and trucking and all of those things, but I know how uh, important it is. So I want to thank you again for your time today and uh, sharing your valuable information. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Mark. I really appreciate the conversation. If anybody wants to get in touch with me, they can do that through LinkedIn. It's probably the best way. Chris Jarvis. I'm happy to hear from you, answer any more questions you might have. And, uh, you know, we look forward to look forward to seeing what you have to say. That sounds great. And and we should just before you go, I got I got my I didn't get my go for uh, socks, unfortunately. So I'm at, I just uh, you know, today I'm just having a little fun with polka dots. But uh, but, uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to I'm pushing on your marketing department that they should order socks. You know, that's the that's absolutely. the future of swag is, I think, socks. So but uh, Chris, thanks again. Have a great day. And uh, we'll be in touch soon, I'm sure. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Look forward to uh your comments and suggestions. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Mark Mitchell on building materials, sales and marketing. We hope he gave you some fresh perspectives on how to grow your sales and will listen to future episodes. 